Outlaw Bookseller Unboxing, Folio SF. My first ever purchase direct from Folio. I tend to go with non-book club things. To me, Folio is still a book club. Just look at the box and it's just got all sorts of classic, modern classic and recently commercially successful books on there. So yeah, nice. And um, there's three items in here. We're going to take a look at it now. Luckily, you've got the old PayPal thing that allows you to pay monthly, which is nice, which I thought I had to do for these because they're quite pricey. So we'll have a look in a moment. Lots of sturdy packaging. I quite like this stuff, actually. It's like a cross between brown paper and bubble wrap. I'm sure there's a technical term for it. There's somebody in packaging can tell me. But it's nice. Yeah, they've um, done them quite well. And what are we having here? Well, I have two old favourites. Two books which made me as a young un, And one of them appeared in my first books that made me video. And the second one... Well, it could appear in the um, in the second one, so maybe it will, and I'll talk more about it then. But I'll show it to you now anyway. I'm going to have to put the camera down and get this ripped open. Right, so inside we've got a little catalogue. The world's most beautiful books. Well, I think I'd probably dispute that a bit. A bit. Um, we'll have a look at that later on. They are nice, though. It's funny, I prefer to see them all together. I mean, on their own, they don't always do it for me. And the only folio book I own is a ballad of the drowned world, which I bought a while ago from Stella and Rose's books in... Right, so inside we've got a little catalogue, the world's most beautiful books. Well, I think I'd probably dispute that a bit. A bit. Um, we'll have a look at that later on. They are nice, though. It's funny, I prefer to see them all together. I mean, on their own, they don't always do it for me. And the only folio book I own is a ballad of the drowned world, which I ordered from Stella and Rose's books in Tintin. And it was still sealed, and I got a decent price on that, because, of course, they got the print. And, you know, if you're going to have a folio, you may as well have the first this. So let's see what we've actually got. So we take the glassine, well it's not glassine, we take the wrap off, it's got tape on it, it's so shame really. And what have we got here? Well we've got Flame Reb Slipcase, bit of a ding on that I think, and it's Planet of the Apes by Pierre Boulle, which was a book that made me. And let's have a look, I'm just going to give it a flip there, and of course with folio, they're jacketless, decorated boards, quarter cloth, gilt lettering down the side and yeah there we go so that's quite nice i bought this because that's clever effect isn't it quite like that i bought this because really my copy of plant the apes i bought in about you know 1974 or something so the total state read loads of times and i thought well it would be nice to have a hardcover this is the first hardcover issue in the uk for many years and i don't really know much about it's first edition, so I must research that some point. I've never looked for one, but I always imagine it's stupidly collectible. And you've got nice teal end papers. And there we go. Translated by Zan Fielding, who is a friend of Patrick Lee for Moores, actually. Produced by Franz de Waal and illustrations by David de la Herrera, whoever he is. Let's have a look at the colophon. There we are. Published by Rachel with Random House and Villiard Books, of course, the original French publisher. Translation, Second World War, 1964. Um, this is a second printing. That's rather annoying. But it doesn't matter because, you know, it's only a this anyway. So it is what it is. Second printing, nice and clear. So there we go. And a list of the illustrations. And we'll just have a flick through. And of course you do this and the illustrations never pop up. Um, they remind me of Anthony Brown's actually. Anthony Brown's a children's author who's got this obsession with gorillas. And it's a bit strange. And I guess that's... Nova there. I seem to remember Nova had dark hair, but there we go. Played by Linda Harrison in the film, of course. And um, Plant the Apes is the first science fiction film I saw at the cinema as a kid, though I guess you could argue. No, the others would have been Harry Orson. They'd have been mythological things. They'd been Seven Voyages, Sinbad, 
and Jason and the Argonauts. So yeah, so there you go. And I'm a big fan of Planet of the Apes, so that's that's quite nice, isn't it? So there we are. So that's that. Slightly disappointed by quality control in terms of a little bit of a mark on the slipcase, though I can't see it now, so it must be only in certain lights. And the fact that's a second printing, but you know, it is what it is. We can cope. It's not as if, you know, I'd sort of bought what I thought was a true UK first and discovered it was a rear so it's not going to be a problem to so pop this out. Right, now this is kind of the cream of the crop, so we're going to come back to that one because that's the one that people are excited about at the moment. And this is another book that made me. I'll just slip that off there because I could keep these, but that's not going to happen. And this, as you see, is Jaws. And Jaws was a book I read and read as a kid. And I'd really like a really nice old A format paperback back of it like I used to have. And it was in an A format until only six or seven years ago. And I reread it for the first time in years. Look at that, that's great. There's the great white view, fantastic. And of course the, the rubber shark leaves in the film, they call him Bruce, didn't they? So there we go. And very, very nice. And yeah, I actually think this is a massively underrated book, but I'm going to talk about it in the books that made me part two. Oh, and this is nice laminated boards, nice and smooth matte laminate. And yeah, I do like that. Very, very nice. Lovely. So yeah, so let's take a look at that. And first printing. Yeah. Um, this edition follows the text of the first edition with minor emendations. Hmm, I wonder what they are. I hope somebody hasn't been fiddling around with that. I'm going to have to have a close look at that. I suspect that some of the erotic sequences, I wonder whether they've been messed with. If they have, I'm going to write to Folio and complain because, you know, there's no need for that. But we'll see. It could be just textual corrections. So I am going to write to them and ask them for clarity on that. Because if they have boulderized the text, this is going to go back. I'm really not happy about that, so we'll see. But yeah, Folio at the moment, they're using this kind of contemporary sort of comic book style illustration thing, which they've done this on the Jurassic Park. And yeah, and I'm not sure actually if I like it or not, but I bought this just sort of a hardcover. In a way, they are sort of almost old school and sort of 50s, but... And I don't really think illustrations are necessary, but they're nice to have, I guess. So we'll see. So that's Jaws. But I will be checking that out and seeing what the emendations are. Emendations as opposed to amendments, spelt with an E. So that's going to be interesting. I need to look into that. So that's Jaws. That's great. OK. Plant the Oaks is the cheapest one. That comes in under 40. The others come in nearer to 50. And this is the cream of the crop. Really. This is the one that's exciting people at the moment. And it's not Ian M. Banks, considered Phlebas. So they've just done a folio of that. I used to have a first of Consider Phlebas and I sold it on years ago. It is instead Roadside Picnic by the Stugatsky Brothers with illustrations by Dave McKean. Now there is, a, there is a limited of this, which obviously is going to be signed by McKean and what have you. And there's one of um, Redrick's tools when he's in the zone. One of the bolts on a rag to sort of detect those. Are they magnetic anomalies? Who can say? And yeah, that's fairly traditional folio sort of embossing and got in gilt there. And yeah, there we go. People recognize these elements from the story. Plain green slipcase, this is actually quite nice. And yeah, Dave McKean, if you're gonna get an illustrated thing, I mean, if it's Dave McKean, it's a whole different ball game, isn't it? Very, very nice tone text block with a design right the way around. That's very handsome, I have to say. I'm very pleased with that. Super end capers. Yeah, that's really good. And more detail, the zone. Lovely. And this looks like the same edition as is in Golag's Masterworks. What that means is I can get rid of that because I've got my old Penguin, which is the previous translation and text, which I'm very fond of. The Masterworks edition, I mean, I need to make space, so that's going to have to go on mine with Mint. Um, first printing 2023. There we are. This translation first published in the UK, Golanx 2012. So there you are. This edition follows the text of the 2012 paperback edition with minor emendations. I'm going to have to look at that again. I can't see how they'd have censored it. It's possibly just textual errors copy, editing, proofing, what have you. Yeah, really nice. And there's an introduction by, um, by Dave McKee. Brilliant. Super. Let's have a look. And we flick through 
and yeah this is this is sort of bed stamp doesn't it this is much more like it this is much more like a proper small press limited that you get wow yeah this is fantastic we really do like Dave McKean I remember selling Arkham Asylum when it came out in hardcover in the UK the Batman graphic novel by Grant Morrison who I really really revere and of course that's by Dave McKean and of course I'm not finding any of the Dave McKean illustrations apart from those ones but there's some more fantastic that'll give you an idea so I would say this is kind of essential really for the serious SF fan and yeah you know I could try and find a first but there are other things if I was going to spend a lot of money on highly collectible books I do like this I like it a lot I do like the Strugatsky Brothers I would probably go down different routes there are other things I like more I'm going to do a video of um, the books I'd really like to buy which I don't have actually Jules Burt did one of those penguins and that was great so there you go so there's um, some folios here so we've got the roadside picnic which is fantastic we've got Jaws so I need to check the emendations note the size is different there's a difference in formats look at that you've got a royal and then this looks like a demi so no hang on no it's a royal so this is even bigger let's just take a look at this yeah that's bigger than a royal probably because the illustrations I didn't actually even notice that because I was so taken with the pictures and the presentation so mm, that I mean I know I'm a ball but for once that sort of gives me pause here. I'm trying to think about the racking now so yeah there we go and it's not a problem because you've got loads of room and yeah they're all slightly different sizes which I really don't like that I do like uniform things with with book formats purely because I have so little space and I have to rack things by format anyway so that's an unboxing and not bad eh so they're out there now get them while they're there bye for now